What are the best baits for wintertime bass fishing? To answer this question, I analyzed over 500 patterns from top 10 finishes in pro level tournaments during the winter to determine what the best baits are to throw when the water gets cold. Let's get into the data. First, let's look at a summarized view of the top five baits from top 10 finishes in pro level tournaments during the winter time on Highland Reservoirs, Lowland Reservoirs, and TVA impoundments. Overall, we can see that the Lipples crankbait is the number one bait, followed by a deep diving jerkbait, deep diving crankbait, jig head minnow, also known as Namiki rig, and then a shallower diving jerkbait. One call out about the data that we used for this analysis is that it comes from the Deep Dive app, which has a database of over 10,000 tournament patterns collected by professional level anglers. When the pros input the data, they want to differentiate the deep diving jerkbait from a standard jerkbait because they do fish differently. However, for all intents and purposes, we could combine these and just say that the jerkbait accounts for 18% of the top 10 finishes, followed by the other three baits. Either way, all four slash five of these baits are very effective during the winter time. But what was actually really interesting is that even though these are the top four or five baits in the summarized view, each individual lake type had its own top baits. If we look at Highland Reservoirs by themselves, for example, you can see that the Jig Head Minnow is the number one bait with 25% of the top five finishes, and the Square Bill Crankbait's actually in this list, even though it's not in the other list before. It's also kind of interesting because that jig head minnow is very effective on highland reservoirs that are further north, they are deep and clear, and have an average water temperature during the winter between 40 to 45 degrees. That's because the bait fish get very deep and a lot of anglers catch fish suspended over creek channels and ditches that are chasing bait fish out in super deep water. However, on highland reservoirs that are further south and have an average water temperature between, let's say, 48 and 55 degrees, that square bill crankbait and that lipless crankbait are very effective because those fish will stay shallower throughout the winter time. So it really kind of depends on which region of the country you're in with these highland reservoirs, and the top baits can vary drastically just based on the average water temperature you're facing. Next, if we look at lowland reservoirs, you can see the deep diving crankbait is the number one bait. I think this is because a lot of the lowland reservoirs we sampled were further south, like in Texas, Louisiana, places like that. And as a result, the average water temperature is between 50 and 60 degrees. In the winter, these fish are still getting offshore, but they're a lot more aggressive because that water temperature hasn't really dropped that cold. And that deep diving crankbait is a great tool at targeting those deeper bass. They are still relatively in a good mood to feed and are grouped up. Finally, if we move to the TVA impoundments, you can see that the lipless crankbait and the bladed jig pop as the top two baits. And that's mainly because of all the offshore grass that these TVA impoundments have. Offshore grass is a great place to find bass in the winter time. And I actually wanna get into all of the areas as well that the anglers are catching fish on with these baits. But I just wanted to call out first that the baits do vary widely depending on which individual lake type you're looking at and the summarized view i gave at the beginning while it does give all of the top baits that are mentioned it doesn't actually give you an accurate representation of which bait is best on each individual lake type which is pretty interesting but if we do take this summarized chart at face value you can see that the jerk bait accounts for 18 percent of those top 10 finishes and i want to go through the jerk bait and the best areas to throw it based on our data as well as the other three baits to give you an idea of the types of areas you should be focusing on to fish these top baits starting with the jerk bait i pulled data from the deep dive database on the top three covers and structures that generated top 10 finishes with a jerk bait in the winter time I did combine the deep diving jerkbait and shallow diving jerkbait data together just for the purposes of this video. And what we find is that the top types of cover that anglers are targeting with this deep diving jerkbait in the winter are brush piles, rock transitions, and standing timber. Now the brush piles and standing timber are classic areas where bass will suspend offshore in the winter time. Now I've had a ton of success targeting these types of cover with a deep diving jerkbait on lakes in my area. The key with fishing this deep diving jerkbait around brush is you wanna make sure that this jerkbait is getting as close to the brush as possible. Before we had live scope, I would do this by graphing over these brush piles, seeing how deep that brush pile is, and then fishing a jerkbait that ran two to three feet shallower than the top of the brush pile that I was fishing. Nowadays though, we have live scope, which makes it a lot easier, and you can actually just pick up any deep diving jerkbait you want, reel it down to whatever depth you need, and just work it 
anywhere from three to 10 feet deep, not worrying so much about the exact depth of that jerk bait. You can also toy with those fish on live scope and get them to follow the bait back, give it an up twitch or a side twitch with that jerk bait and get them to actually commit to that bait. When a lot of times in the past, I feel like I probably wasn't getting a lot of these fish to commit because I just didn't even know they were behind it before live scope. But either way, you can catch a lot of numbers and a lot of big fish on jerk baits out of brush piles. In terms of where you should be looking for these brush piles and the standing timber, it shows here in the data that rounded points and offshore flats are your top two options. Both of these structure types are a more gradual flat area where the depth changes gradually over a long distance. Usually though, you'll find that the best rounded points in offshore flats do have a drop off eventually into some type of creek channel. And if you can find these rounded points and these offshore flats anywhere from let's say eight to 15 feet of water that then drop off on the sides to 30 or 40 feet of water, you usually find a larger concentration of fish that you can target with that jerk bait. However, there are times where I just find fish on random rounded points and random flats in the winter time that are not close to any drop off and they just live out there. So you wanna make sure you put some time behind your graphs, graph with your side imaging, with your down imaging, find those brush piles, find that standing timber, and then go throw that deeper diving jerk bait. My go-to jerk bait when I'm fishing this style is going to be the Spro Mix Stick 110 plus one. I'll actually weight this jerk bait on the front with an extra split ring to allow that bait to sink it falls basically about like one foot every five seconds. And what that allows me to do is if I need to get that bait down to 12 or 15 feet, I can just pause the bait, let it sink super, super slow, not too fast where the bait sinks like a rock, but it allows me to just be very patient, let that bait sink down to that top of that brush pile. And then I work it right by that pile. Those fish will come out and they'll absolutely crush that bait. Next, let's take a look at the top covers and structures for lipless crankbaits. Overall, offshore grass is the dominant type of cover in the winter time for that lipless crankbait. That makes sense because on the TVA impoundments, there's a ton of offshore grass that's setting up on large flats in anywhere from six to 12 feet of water. Fish will set up around any sort of depressions or ditches or depth changes in that grass. And they can even be setting up on high spots, but basically any place in the flat where there's either a small increase in depth or a small decrease in depth, that will usually attract these fish. And what anglers like to do is basically just cover massive amounts of water with the lipless crankbait, casting out, getting it purposely hung up in the grass and then ripping it free. When that bait pops out of the grass, it'll cause a reaction strike and those fish will eat the bait. The great thing about a lipless crankbait is that one, it does generate those reaction strikes out of the, out of the grass, but it also allows you to cover a large amount of water because it is kind of hard to find those fish in offshore grass with standard electronics. You can sometimes graph them with side imaging or with live scope if you find a nice big open area or you have the perfect situation, but usually it's actually more efficient to just fish through a large grassy area. And then by making a lot of casts per day with this crankbait, you can cover a vast amount of water waiting till you get bit and then once you get your first bite, usually you're going to have a large concentration of fish setting up in the general area where you get that bite. A lot of times there'll be a grass patch out on these flats that's the size of the front deck of your boat that's holding 30 or 40 fish. And while it is like finding a needle in a haystack, when you find that needle, you can absolutely wreck them. And it's hard for a lot of other anglers to locate that area easily. So you can oftentimes have that spot all to yourself. This works really well, again, on those TVA impoundments, but also on lowland reservoirs like Sam Rayburn Lake. I mean, throwing a Rayburn Wren rattle trap in grass ditches is a super popular pattern. And then also on some of the highland reservoirs like like Washita in central Arkansas, where there is also offshore hydrilla can be a great technique for catching some big fish. In addition to those offshore grass areas though, you can also see that bank grass is a big player with the slipless crankbait. A lot of those fish, when the water temperatures are between 50 and 60 degrees in the winter, will still stay up in two to five feet of water around shallow bank grass. You can rip that lipless crankbait out of some of that grass that's maybe even dying off or is just clinging on to life. And on those nice warm sunny days, those big fish will pull up right into that bank grass. And I know I've caught them in central Arkansas really well in December and January, fishing in two foot of water with this lipless crankbait. 
My go-to lipless crankbait is a striking red eye shad. It's actually the tungsten two tap version. I just like the sound of that bait. And I'll also go to a three quarter ounce lipless crankbait at times as well, but fishing a little bit deeper in deeper grass. In terms of the structures you're looking for, again, offshore flats, as we mentioned earlier, and also rounded points and flat banks. Overall, if you look at the types of structures we've talked about so far, all of them are flatter structures, which is something that I learned many years ago, and it's kind of counterintuitive when you think about how cold it is in the winter. When I first started fishing in the wintertime, I thought the fish were all going to be setting up on the steepest drops, the deepest water. And while that is the case on some fisheries, a lot of times your best fishing can actually come on the flat, gradual sloping areas, even in flat, shallow pockets. And it surprised me when I started kind of getting in the tournament scene, how many tournaments were being won in flat pockets, flat coves, shallow flat areas in two to eight feet of water all winter long. And that's where a lot of the best fish were being caught. So don't always think that you have to fish the steepest, deepest areas in the winter. Those flat spots can be very, very good. Next up, we have the deep diving crankbait. As we can see from the data, brush piles and shell beds are the two primary types of cover that generate top 10 finishes. This deep diving crankbait is great on those lowland reservoirs and can also be effective on some of the TVA impoundments as well. And when those fish are grouped up in schools on shell beds or grouped up in offshore brush piles, this crankbait is a very effective way at covering water and hitting brush piles quickly or those shell beds quickly. And it also catches very big fish. I know the few times I've gone down to Texas in January and February, the deep diving crankbait has been my number one tool. And I basically would just get on offshore hard spots, offshore brush piles, crank that thing through those areas when the water temperatures are still above 50 degrees and you can catch a pile of fish, you know, 20, 30 fish a day, but also catch some really big ones, you know, six to eight pounders. You can also catch fish on an Alabama rig a lot of times in those same situations, though the data that we collect it doesn't include Alabama rigs or umbrella rigs just because they're not allowed in professional fishing tournaments. So we don't have like Alabama rig data, but that deep diving crankbait is an awesome way to target those areas. Again, if we look at the types of structure these anglers are targeting that generate top 10 finishes, it's again, offshore flats and rounded points, as well as a few ledges as well. In some of the lowland reservoirs down south and some of the TVA impoundments, the fish will set up on ledges during the winter, though I find that it's not nearly as productive of a type of structure compared to the flatter structures like the offshore flats and those rounded points. As far as deep diving crankbaits go, I really like the Strike King lineup of deep diving crankbaits, whether it's a 6XD, 8XD, 10XD, can't go wrong with any of those. Finally, we have the Jig Head Minnow or the Demiki Rig. Based on our data, you can see that the two primary types of cover that anglers fish this bait around are rock piles and bait fish. Now I know bait fish isn't really a cover type, but for our data, that's kind of how we categorized it just because the way that anglers are fishing this bait is actually finding schools of bait fish out in the middle of the lake and then following those bait fish around with either 2D sonar back in the day or live scope nowadays and you'll find fish that are suspended either above or below the bait fish schooling under the water and even when water temperatures are very cold 40 degrees you'll find fish that are roaming and chasing bait schools around and usually you'll find these bait fish and these bass suspended anywhere from 10 to 50 feet of water over 30 to 100 feet of water so the bottom of the lake can be very deep but those fish won't be sitting up on the bottom they're suspended 20 to 50 feet off the bottom chasing those shad. In terms of the types of structures that anglers are targeting with this, they usually are looking for ditches as well as some channel swing points. A channel swing point is basically a place where a creek channel runs up against a point, and most of the time anglers are fishing actually in the channel when they're fishing these areas. And then when they're fishing ditches or drains, again, they're fishing the center of that drain where the deepest water is, but those fish aren't on the bottom, they're suspended over that channel chasing those bait fish. Another type of cover though that does work really well are rock piles. And if you have a lot of smallmouth in your fishery in the winter time, you can actually catch fish moping, which is basically fishing a jig head minnow, dropping it down to the 
top of rock piles and just holding that bait there. And that's how Jeff Gustafson won the Bassmaster Classic actually over on the TVA impoundments over there. It was the Fort Loudon Teleco area. And he was basically just dropping a jig head minnow and just holding it right there on top of those rock piles and fish. Again, on rounded points, channel swing points, offshore flats, catching a lot of really, really good fish. A few of my go-to jig head minnow setups is this 3 8 ounce 4 x 4 tackle jig head with a 2 watt swim bait hook. This is a great little head that allows the bait to fall very quickly with that 3 8 ounce, but still has a small enough hook to fit these small baits. This is a Mega Bass Hasdong. It's a small Japanese made worm. They're kind of hard to get. You can get them over at the tackle hookup. I'll leave a link down in the description. It's a great little lifelike shad imitator bait that I catch a bunch of fish on. Another little Demiki rig or jig head minnow style bait that works really well is that Bass Tricks Live Tricks with the Live Tricks head. It has a little bit of lead going underneath the body of that swim bait, which helps balance it out. And this comes in a quarter ounce and a three eighths ounce. Also another really great Demiki style bait. One other bait I have been experimenting with too, based on a conversation I had with Jacob Wheeler a couple days ago was the new Crush City Freeloader, which is a new bait that he designed. You may have seen him win a tournament over on Chickamauga with it, which is a 4.25 inch straight tail minnow, but it has very flat sides and it pairs perfectly with the quarter ounce two aught tush hook from Core Tackle. That bait will rock side to side a ton, which gives it a lot of extra flash when it's working through the water. And I've been throwing this around on Table Rock and Beaver recently, and I'll have some videos coming out. Caught some really good fish with this deal. So good little bait, throwing this on a seven foot uh, four multi-purpose spinning rod from Denali, just a medium heavy spinning rod. So I can kind of set the hook with that heavier tush hook, but I'll also throw it on a lighter seven foot or seven foot two medium action rod with some of these lighter uh, hooks on these smaller jig heads. So guys, those are the baits that I've found to be the most effective based on over 500 tournament patterns from top 10 finishes in winter tournaments. Hopefully these baits will help you catch some more fish this winter. Definitely look at those charts again. And if you are fishing some of those highland reservoirs, TVA impoundments or lowland reservoirs, try some of the other baits I didn't talk about because while they aren't as popular, they are still very effective in getting top 10 finishes and could be some sleeper baits that you can use out on the lake. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you want more data videos like this, definitely leave a comment down below and also check out the deep dive app if you guys want more information about the best baits on your lake. Thanks for checking out this video. We'll see y'all next one.